is the NVIDIA RTX 3080, the 10 gigabyte version, still good in 2023. We're gonna do a very simple comparison. We're gonna compare it to what it's supposed to be replaced by, which is the RTX 4080 with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Now, the biggest thing here, obviously, is gonna be the price. The first 3080, it was 699. That was a really good price at the time. Like this GPU was always out of stock during the great GPU shortage, if you will. The 4080 has not been out of stock and with a price of 1199, it's basically almost twice the price, but are you getting twice the performance? And is it worth the upgrade or should you still get a pretty decent performance uplift from even like a 4070 12 gigabyte? Let's take a look at one game in particular because I know this game stresses the VRAM a lot. This is Ratchet and Clank. It's not usually a game that's going to be used in benchmarks, but it's a game that I have fun playing and it definitely uses a lot of VRAM. So the 3080, it's going to be in this main gear turbo system. First of all, it's an absolute Absolutely beautiful system. It's like a little work of art. It's all pretty much liquid cooled, but they're Apex system. So 5800X, this is a little bit older system. This is a system that you could have realistically have gotten during a few years ago and still have today. It's still a pretty modern system with an X570i Strix motherboard. And of course, the 3080 Founders Edition water cooled and a 5800X, which is also water cooled. So that's going to keep everything pretty much in check in terms of thermals even though it is a you know a small case with a mini itx motherboard the thermals while not the coolest in the world because you only have a 280 um, you know millimeter radiator in there it still does the job and there's not really much or any thermal throttling at all so with the 3080 and ratchet and clank we're going to put it on very high 1440p and we're going to turn off any type of upscaling like DLSS and of course we're going to turn on ray tracing and we're going to put that on very high basically all of the graphics maxed out so with the 3080 10 gigabyte you do run into some issues you can see the frame rate isn't going to be the most consistent it's not going to be the highest generally you're going to be right in the 30s to 40s in terms of the frames per second I mean it's not like a terrible experience where it just doesn't work but definitely the 3080 i think is starting to show its age a little bit especially with a game like this so let's see if we switch it out to the 4080 in a different system of course because i don't have a water-cooled 4080 that's going to fit in this very small case we're going to be using just you know the regular 4080. without any type of upscaling, the performance is significantly better. Like we're literally like in the 80s with the same type of settings. So more or less, you're almost getting twice the performance. A really big reason for this, and I actually showed this when I was doing a video before on the 4060 Ti 8 gigabyte versus 16 gigabyte version on games that are limited by the VRAM amount. Not only the memory bus bandwidth, which is also a limit on some of these newer GPUs, but simply the amount, the allocation, like 16 gigabytes on the 4080, it's gonna be pretty good for almost every single game at 1440p. Rarely will you need more than that unless you go to 4K. So on the 4080, without any type of upscaling, you get a really, really big performance uplift over the 3080. That VRAM, you know, definitely gonna be a pretty big reason. If this was like a 12 gigabyte 3080, I think it certainly would perform better because then this game likes to use at least 12, 
13 gigabytes of VRAM, so it would have a little bit more you know, room to spread out. The memory bandwidth isn't a problem on the 3080, it's just really the VRAM amount, and 10 is better than eight, but it's still a little bit too tight for 2023 at 1440p. Remember, the 3080 was basically an sort of a 4k card back when it came out it wasn't even just a 1440p card but as we can see with some of these newer games it definitely has a lot of trouble so what happens if you put a 4070 in here that's something that somebody who had a 3080 may consider upgrading to well i'm actually running the 4070 right now and let's turn it to like the you can call it the live view camera here i'm going to turn it to my screen and i already have it set up let's see what we're getting here so average, let me get on the microphone here. Average, we seem to be maybe like, a, let me reset that FPS. You know, maybe 60 FPS or so. Let's check out these settings, make sure that they're the same. We're gonna go to display and graphics. You can see 1440p, 2560 by 1440. No upscaling, we got TAA. Graphics, pretty much everything on very high including ray tracing let's even put this on dlaa that's going to be a little bit more demanding here let's reset our little fps counter move around a bit this is a pretty busy scene it's like a you know it's one of like a boss battle you can see when you have dlaa on it does drop a decent amount now it's like 45 fps average but you can see that VRAM allocation. Look at that, 11,373, and it's using 10,502. So this would pretty much blow out of the water the 3080 because the 3080 only has 10 gigabytes of VRAM. So we're seeing that limit at play here, 47 FPS. Let's take down again this um, to TAA because that's what I believe I tested the, uh, the 3080 at just to make it a little fair comparison and we saw before initially it did get you know higher uh, fps okay where are we all right let's move around he's kind of falling off the map here trying to do this with one hand a little tough here we go okay so average you know close to maybe 50 fps so we're a little better than that 3080 i don't know if it's necessarily worth the upgrade but you do use more VRAM on the 4070. I think on the 4070, the big difference is gonna be when you use DLSS with frame generation on a game like this. So let's see how much better. I mean, look at that. It jumps up to like 122, 119. That is like significantly better. And then this would definitely, and it looks really smooth too. As I'm playing, like uh, the graphics look great, nice and sharp, looks pretty smooth. Yeah, so an average of like 111. So in terms of brute force, the 4070 12 gigabyte is gonna be a little bit better than the 3080, you can say, 10 gigabyte. But if you factor in that it's a lot more efficient, power-wise, and it uses DLSS 3 with frame generation, on a game like this, it's gonna really blow the 3080 out of the water, then you can make an argument for upgrading to that GPU. And then of course, if you turn on DLSS 3 on the 4080, then you're getting a much, much higher frames per second than anything the 3080 would even come close to touching without being on like low settings or something like that. So you can make a case that the performance gap could be pretty significant even without any type of upscaling, just looking at the 4080 versus 3080 numbers, but justifying over two to three times the price is a little bit hard. On the 4080, 70 if you do use dlss3 you can get away with some pretty decent performance i think and have some of those newer more efficient features all right guys this was just a little quick look at the 3080 how it fares against a couple of newer gpus let me know what you think down below remember to subscribe and i'll see you guys on the next video